the time of easily being able to tell the difference between real video and AI video is officially over. Take a look at this. I am a puppet for anyone who can afford me. How will you know who to trust? <laughs> Every business will use me. So what you just saw wasn't filmed by a camera, uh, and there's no actual real people in any of that. That's completely made by AI. Let's take a look at another. Welcome to a non-existent car show. Let's see some opinions. I mean, man, the acceleration is crazy. You look far, step on the pedal, and you are there. <laughs> this is gonna send absolute ripples through our media landscape. So a lot of this new content you're seeing being pushed out right now is made off of Google's new uh, video generation called VO3. Uh, VO2 was released about five months ago, and all of this content here is being released on VO3. Yeah, but uh, don't tell anyone, I've just bought an electric car. I think it's really great for families. And, and it's pretty wild to be able to tell that difference. Like, take a look at this. Okay, so Riz is basically short for charisma. Got it. And that's a verb as well. So you've got a professor talking with Gen C slang. Some of my more favorite ones like this. When I made that comment, I wasn't saying all kobolds are bad and stinky, just the ones from Goblin Town. And it's true. It's true. I mean, obviously some of the stuff is ridiculous, but it does look like real actors going around. I think perhaps the craziest one that I've seen, though, is from this uh, pharmaceutical industry. So this is from a user, PJ Ace, on Twitter. Apparently, he used to make uh, pharmaceutical commercials, and he made this with about uh, $500 in credits. I tried everything for my depression. Nothing worked. Every day felt heavy. I felt trapped. Then I tried Puppermin. Our prescription helps your body secrete a special pheromone that attracts puppies. I took the pill before bed, and when I woke up, there he was, the love of my life. <laughs> the pill does not target depression directly, but we've found that it's really difficult to be depressed when cute dogs show up at your... Like, the quality of that is just insane. Like, those people talking, some of it looks... I tried awesome. everything for my depression. But, to be honest, if you're seeing this on a video and you're not exactly looking for those sort of artifacts are popping up. Like you can see there are some on these puppies' paws get a little bit mess as does this snout be a little bit garbled. Or the fact that on this door that the male outside door is actually on the outside of the door as opposed to the mailbox being on the inside of the door. Or the copper kick plate perhaps being on the wrong side of the door opening out into the street versus opening into a house which is what doors typically do. And you're just casually looking at a lot of these things and you're not intensely looking at this, this is going to fool a lot of people. We can think about the scam potential this might come up with. For instance, your child is phoning, and this is something I've thought about in the past because I've got a couple of young children, and I think, you know, in 10 years' time, someone calls you over the phone and says, Hey, Dad, I uh, was going down on this trip, and I need a little bit of money to be able to get down there. Or I need a little bit of money to be able to book a flight because I missed it. Can you transfer some over here to this account? While you might think that you understand where it goes from, you've got slight audio intricacies of it being a phone call, things are perfectly clear, things can get cut out, and it'll be pretty easy for you to be able to suspend disbelief on that. You might be able to even fake some legal, legal evidence or fake some insurance fraud by using videos like this. Perhaps somebody you want to be in a relationship is already in a relationship, so you can sabotage them by using some sort of fake video created with them. Let's take a look at another here. Today's lesson is on prompt theory, which is the theory that everything you do has been prompted by a higher power. No, seriously, have any of you ever felt like your choices don't matter? Like, like the idea of free will is really all an illusion? They're calling it the prompt theory. So this is particularly tongue-in-cheek from a YouTube user put you on, but I think it's quite an in-depth look and analysis at where we're going. And uh, one thing that's going to start happening and is likely already happening is an erosion of trust in the media and what you see online. For instance, there was some recent videos being pushed out about a Chinese robot boxing league. Uh, and the first thing I thought of when I saw that, I even caught myself, I was like, nope, there's no way this is real. That is absolutely AI slot being generated. And to be honest, I still don't know if it's real or not as of the time of this recording, because all of the content I'm seeing online about it is just one specific video that's being shared over and over again. So if even myself, who's been in this world for 10 plus years, am getting slipped up on this and thinking, is this actually real or not? 
we're going to be in for a serious problem. Because again, you have to think about this. We're not critically examining every single piece of media that comes up when we watch it. Uh, it would be basically it'd be impossible for us to think about that all the time and always think about, yes, I know exactly where this piece of media is coming from. And I'm looking at every single piece. You might even get a few pieces that are being thrown in with real people and then a few things of AI and then real people again. One thing I think might be particularly telling for this is that adults may be able to tell some of these things, especially uh, those who are on a little more ta- tech savvy kind of side of things. But think about children watching this. This is a completely AI generated video of a let's play Fortnite content. Pretty common you'll see online. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Victory Royale with a pickaxe. <laughs> if you're watching this online, it's going to even create that video game content. There's another one out there of a Minecraft streamer, and he looks a little bit off, but I mean, this Fortnite gameplay creator, you'll easily be able to have just a lot of AI slop being generated. You're already probably seeing a lot of AI slop on YouTube, on shorts, on TikTok, things like that, where these videos are already not created by real people. You're going to start seeing a lot more of that because it just got significantly easier to do. So for instance, one of those key differences in VO2 and VO3 is not only better image generation, but also the ability to generate audio. So here's a clip of VO2, which keep in mind came out about five months ago, and it's already pretty good. Now you got some weird physics going on with those air bubbles and air bubbles just being created out of nowhere. But again, if you're just scrolling through a, a, a thread, even on some technology we're at five months ago, you're really not noticing a difference. And now with VO3, we can create audio on these things. And back to the idea of those kids and those streamers, you're really going to start getting a lot of that AI slop, especially being projected at kids. If you can think back to several years ago, we had that Elsa gate and we had those really weird AI generated things going up on YouTube kids. Uh, we're going to see far more of that. And it's going to get even harder to distinguish the difference between who is a real person, who's not a real person. I'm not sure if you know about Quebble Cop, but a good chunk of the videos that he's posting out are completely AI generated. Uh, So we're already kind of starting into this uh, world. He was kind of getting ahead of the game a little bit in creating some of this content. But I mean, he's got 15 million subscribers. And he's being honest about this as well, showing it as almost a media literacy kind of point. Imagine how many people are going to be fooled in this and they're not being honest about these things being AI. You also think about those personalized echo chambers are going to start created especially on websites like Twitter, X, where you are creating threads that are just for you, you're going to start getting a lot of people agreeing with your worldview and you might even start disengaging. So where do we go from here? Personally, I think you're really going to start to try to find some people who are far more real online when you're trying to engage with content. I know I'm looking for things that aren't as well produced. I'm looking for things a little more raw, a little more natural because it's more likely that person is actually someone who's sharing some real ideas. I'm also thinking about in the future, how are we going to adapt to a world where it's really difficult to verify that information? When I was growing up back in school, it was challenging to find the information. Now there's so much information out there that we're having to source through that information. At least when I was in university, now there's so much information out there, you had to know how to find the information. And now a new challenge in that media literacy is not only is it there's so much information out there, you're also having to figure out what information is true and what information is not true especially when you get these AIs starting to train themselves on self-propagating information where they're training themselves on data that AI has already made, it's going to get even more challenging. And in terms of where we go on from here, I think something that's going to happen is once we get enough AI content up on the internet and things are going rapidly quick with just how fast these things are adapting, people might just start disengaging from the internet in general. I'm curious about your thoughts on that. I know I personally have been finding I'm using social media a lot less recently because so much of it is AI content now that I'm looking for more real experiences. When I used to play video games online, now I'm really craving for those old days of couch co-op where I've got someone in person with me that I'm interacting with. Do you think you might also disengage? You might try to find some of your own personal communities that you can interact with? Or do you think you might go out and really engage on these kind of points? Are you going to lean harder into creating your own sort of private community because you actually prefer interacting with these AIs? Uh, And that might actually be something that some people end up uh, going with. Personally, I think we're going to engage in a bit of a renaissance of having more personal interactions with people, especially as the world uh, moves further into this with the content. So let's take a look at one more of these. I'm just words some guy is typing to get a point across. 
The old internet is dead. Oh. I am your new best friend. <gasps> I mean, obviously there's still some weird things in that he's literally pouring fluid out of his mouth at the end. Still pretty wild stuff. It's a really interesting look into that zeitgeist of where it is we're going as a society in general uh, and something to really start thinking about. And you may call me a bit of a preparer, a bit of a doomer on this one, but one thing I know that I've started to do with my family is when we're talking about personal things, either on a video call or on a phone call, we've got a catchphrase with a person, a place, and an action, what it is that they're doing, that only we and that other person know that if we start to talk about information that is really in-depth or is critical, something about finance or something about personal information, things along those lines, we will use this kind of hey, what are you doing right now? And then it, we break into that person, place, and action a sentence so that we know that the person I'm talking to is actually a real person. So we may even have to have some of those security verification questions that are personal knowledge information that people know when you're having any sort of online conversations about personal matters. So I hope you have fun. Keep going down that uh, AI rabbit hole we're going for now. Hopefully it continues to stay fun. It doesn't turn into something wild. And I'll catch you all in the next one.